Hi everyone. This is your usual team from St. James the Less Church in Northfield, meeting you in a rather unusual way. You at the Grove and each of us at our own homes recording this service separately. Many of you will know who we all are, but in case you haven't met us before, I'm going to introduce the whole team. I'm Sue. I've been coming up to the Grove since St. Patrick's Day in 2000. My husband Simon is here with me and we've also got Reverend Lisa and our music director Josh and Denny, John and Phil. We're all familiar faces to most of you and we're very sorry that the coronavirus is preventing us all from coming in to hold our services normally and to see you all. We'd much prefer to be doing that and worshipping with you in person, but this is the best we can do in this strange time. And we hope that this recording will help us all to pray and to worship God. While we are being kept apart for everyone's safety, we are not being kept separate from God. He is with us each and every day, every one of us. He's very present with us. And he shows us his love and care, even in this very challenging time. Now, a few practical issues. Most of the time in this recording, you'll only hear one of us speaking because of the limitations of the recording process, which doesn't cope well with multiple voices. But we'll all be participating, even if you can't actually hear all of us speak. And we invite you to join with us in singing to God, and in praying out loud as you watch this recording. So let's open this service in prayer, praying to get now. Dear Lord, you call us to worship you, both individually and in community. Thank you that you have drawn us together via the internet. And thank you for this recording, which enables us to worship, to pray, and to have some semblance of community together. Amen. Amen. O oh God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls each of us by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, please join the St. James the Less Choir in singing the hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Oh 
A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate in the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Hello. I am so glad that we have this ability to connect uh, me from my home and St. James the Less and with you at the Grove. We have missed you and miss worshiping with you and hearing how things are going for you. We are praying that you are well and that you have what you need. Uh, so, and I'm so grateful for Sue and Simon and Josh and Phil and John and Denny to um, come together in this way to, to offer this worship service. Uh, what a blessing it is. So greetings to you, the res all the residents at the Grove, those we know well and those we have not yet met. The Bible proclaims the voice of God speaking to humankind. Uh, at the beginning, at creation, out of the void, God's voice spoke light and life into being. And then remember through fire, God's voice urged Moses to respond to the cries of the slaves in Egypt. And on a cliff, the prophet Ezekiel heard the voice of God in the sound of sheer silence. The gospel today talks about the voice of God, the good shepherd, who we learn and know more of through the voice of Jesus, who calmed the sea, who healed the sick, whose voice forgave sins and in the upper room alive, resurrected from the dead, bearing the wounds of the cross. Jesus proclaimed to the disciples, peace be with you. Jesus also said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. In the gospel we just heard, Jesus invoked the divine and ancient image of God as a shepherd when he said, I am the gate. In these words, Jesus daringly spoke intimately of the very heart and nature of God. Because to say, I am the gate, would have literally uh, had his listeners envision Jesus himself sitting in the opening to a temporary fenced area made by shepherds to protect the sheep. 
They would build these, these temporary places for the night uh, out of sticks and whatever they could find to fence them in and to keep the sheep safe, leaving only one opening. And that opening, a chosen shepherd would sleep there overnight and protect the sheep from wandering off or predators from wandering in. The shepherd thereby protected the sheep with his or her own body. So when Jesus said, I am the gate, it is to say, I am keeping you safe. Recently, with a psychologist meeting with a bunch of clergy, uh, she opened her comments to us about this very strange time sheltering in place with this virus um, running rampant across the whole world. She opened with these words to us. She said, if you feel worn out, if you feel ragged or out of sorts, it is because you and your loved ones are in danger. Now, most of us are isolating and sheltering in our homes, the epitome of safety, a place that we are cared for. And yet, as I reflected um, on this statement, you are in danger, which I wasn't so much feeling that I'm in danger, but as I reflected on this, this stark conclusion that she made, it made me realize that coronavirus, this pandemic, has given us this very strong awareness that we are, in fact, in danger. Danger of contracting the virus and fear of loved ones contracting the virus and could cause severe illness or worse. Jesus says, you are safe. Listen to my voice and you will be safe. Of course, the truth is we're always in danger. We were in danger before the pandemic. That is the nature of life. Our death is as certain as it is unpredictable. And yet we need and want a sense that even in danger, we are safe. I think that's why so many of us turn to the church, turn to religion, turn to the scriptures, hymns and art, prayers, ritual. It's our way of reaching out to God for a sense of ultimate safety. Jesus says, you are safe. Listen to my voice and you will be safe. We were in danger before the pandemic in other ways. Our society and culture soul sick with greed and abuse and excesses that hurt and harm in ways that are numerous and far-reaching. We're hardly even fully aware of all the ways we are soul sick. In our homes and businesses, schools, nursing homes, wherever we are, there's no perfectly safe place for everyone. Our interconnection as human beings provides security at the same time as the source of our danger. Jesus says, you are safe. Listen to my voice and you will be safe. The voice of God. The voice of God alone can bring a comfort and a perfect and unconditional love, a sense of well-being, even when things are not well. God's voice has this power to speak directly to our hearts and our souls. The voice of God is not always easy to hear, not always easy to discern among many competing voices in our heads, around us. 
As Christians, we know it takes a lifetime to learn, to hearken to God's voice. I think that's why I take a little time every day to meditate, time in silence daily, to sort of sort through all those competing voices inside of me, ones that tell me to be worried and anxious, ones that tell me um, uh, that I'm not good enough or nobody cares about me, ones that, that tell me all sorts of competing things that keep me from the presence and guidance of God's voice. When I take those moments to sort of lean back into God's heart, I sense there a voice deeper resonant within me, guiding me to peace. Maybe the simplest definition of spirituality is forming habits to listen for God in our day. What sounds make you feel safe? Bird song is so loud right now. And I find myself stepping outside just to listen, especially in the morning and evening, to their song. That sound of creation guides me to know that I'm in an environment that is safe. I call my mom regularly, and the sound of her voice gives me a sense of security. Listening to music hearing laughter, they remind me uh, that these sounds remind me that uh, I am in a world of comfort, that I am home, that I am safe. In the same way, take time to listen for God's voice in your daily life. Build a habit of it. God will guide you to what you need. God will guide you toward who needs you. God will guide you to those still waters and those green places where you can be still and know that God is with you. Amen. And now let us pray. In our prayers, when I say the words, risen Lord, let's all respond by saying, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord, you are our shepherd. Protect us from danger, especially in this time of pandemic. Keep watch over us. Guide us towards green pastures where we can be nourished by your word and lead us to pure, still waters, where we can be refreshed by your love. Risen Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, you are our shepherd. We thank you for those who offer us words of encouragement. Inspire us also, that we may be effective in encouraging others. Risen Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, you are our shepherd. As shepherds must care for their flocks, so must humankind care for the planet for which we are stewards. May we preserve its beauties and use its resources wisely that your manifold earthly creation may be blessed. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our shepherd. You seek out the lost and the sick. We pray for those who at this time are depressed or sick. In the pause which follows, name to yourself those for whom you are concerned.
we pray too for the staff at the Grove, that they will cope well with this difficult time. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you are our shepherd. You comfort those who walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In the pause which follows, name to yourself the departed, whom you would like to remember today. When we find ourselves in the valley of the shadow of death, may we, like the psalmist, fear no evil, for you are with us, our risen friend. Risen Lord, hear yes, our prayer. prayer. In the words our Lord Jesus gave to his disciples, let us say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let's say together the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon, where there is doubt, faith, where there is despair, hope, where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. And now, please join the St. James the Less Choir as we sing together, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, give praise to his name. Jesus is Lord of all. Oh, oh, oh. 
This has been wonderful, and I pray uh, that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be upon your hearts and minds, keep you in the knowledge and love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain upon you always. Amen. <laughs>